Hey there, humans. Just out for a yomp in the outskirts of Bristol. This is 50 Acre Woods. Interesting times. If you follow the media or speak to any other human, there is very strong topics and opinions at the moment. Quite divided, quite distracted. The two greatest ways to win, to win a war. Now there was World War One and Two. We all know about. We have dates and time periods when it when it started, as if you could define a start moment. But now World War Three. Do you think that could happen? What do you think it would look like? Or do you think it's already begun? And this time they just thought, let's let's not announce it. How do we, what do we want out of this? Control, power, sleeping humans that will do our bidding. World War Three, it would appear as though it's, it's, it probably started a while ago. And this one's a silent war, if you're truly like, Paying attention, it's in our subconscious, for our minds, for our disempowerment, to keep us in fear, in a reactionary mode, in our emotions. When we're emotional, we don't make the best decisions. And so we're fed on the surface this, this uh, belief that we are the most advanced civilization ever in existence. While if you tune in and actually observe and think what that would look like, what is true wealth to a human, health, pretty close, but not quite there. Health is true wealth. What is a product of health? I'd say happiness, natural state of happiness, of joy, without wanting for much would be a natural Say that, that would be evidence to me that we are a healthy society, which would be evidence to me that we are advanced. And I, I honestly, I don't see that. I see things in my lifetime maybe getting worse. I guess it's hard to say, but I don't see that it's success. So the powers that be, who are they? People ask me that, who are they? Who's this they you speak of? Because if I was to say, the current situation, right? We have division between, you have right and left, red and blue. Now they've brought up black and white again. Uh, you've got the police versus civ civilians, which is what I think is the real agenda here, potentially, but it, I mean, this is just speculation. If, if, the, if the police are in enthused and in, <laughs> empowered to control us because there there's a war between civilians and police then they will do the bidding of they above whoever they is and then we go back to that point who are they because we need the police there's a lot of lovely stable balanced police men and women and and soldiers armies and officers who will act on behalf of them especially if it looks like the civilians are acting out so we need to remain balanced but anyway so we're being in my perspective, observing from the outside, we're being pushed to react and create this divide between, that's the real divide I think they're trying to create, between those that they enforce the law, even though the law's written in us anyway, in our hearts, if, if we're connected to that. So we're disconnected from the true laws written into us, into lawlessness, then they have this enforcement office that they put in officials, they put in place, that if they create a divide between us and them, they will be more likely to do their bidding and they have all the, milita uh, the militia they need and weapons to control us. Which is, you know, I, I've sort of under always understood when people, I used to be against like gun laws and why, why would you have guns? And then I started to realize, yeah, actually, if you didn't trust the people in power and they've got all this military, you've got no chance if you don't, <laughs> you don't have weapons. But that, I mean, for me, that's not the solution. But I understand why people would want weapons if they're starting to not trust the people in power. And so, 
the people in power? Is it the government? Mm, probably not. I don't. I don't think most people in the government would have a clue what is going on. Really, if it's they, we're after them. Is there some new world order? Some um, Bilderberg group? Some Illuminati? Some reptilians? Could it be the Jews? You know, who knows? But for me, that's that's. Even though it would be important at some stage, at this stage it's irrelevant, but what, what I observe from it is if you know the art of war, the two greatest principles are one, distraction. So wherever we're focused right now, know that that's probably a distraction. Two would be to know your enemy and not let them know you. Now, if you know your enemy and they know you, it's pretty even, depending on obviously that it comes down to other issues, other things at that point. But if, if they know you and you don't know them, then that's a good, that's a simple win for them, really. So they know us more than ever because of social media, because of the data collection they have on us. So they know us very well, where, where we'll be, what we'll be looking at, what we're into, what we're talking about. They know us so well and we don't know a they. Just because we don't know a they, it doesn't mean that they don't exist, that there is no power, people or beings running this thing from some other place to potentially, I don't want to use that word, but enslave the whole human race, you know, um, into, into this sort of docile place that we're becoming as humans, where we're not in our power, we're not in our health. We're not in control, we're dependent on the system. And so that when you're dependent on something, and this happens in relationships, they can capitalize and take advantage of that. Now, the things that remained open throughout all this was the giant supermarkets, because they had to be, because it was essential. And then a lot of the small shops and businesses closed down. Now we'll see what comes on the other side of this. Anyway, the, the lesson, the lesson in all of this distraction because to fight racism, in my perspective, is, is hacking at the branches of evil. And it's not getting to the root. And if, if we just focus on that and we act, we stay emotionally invested to our history and try to defend that and stay attached to that, we end up just attacking directly what's in front of us. One head of Medusa, right? And we need to get to the the full the full thing you can't just chop one head off and there's others there coming as well we need to get to the root of this stop hacking at the branches of evil and for me the root of that is a, a human disconnection and we're disconnected to each other because we're disconnected to ourselves because we've got an emptiness inside that is not filled when we're in the matrix the matrix it keeps us alive but it doesn't it doesn't satiate our soul it's it it keeps our bodies ticking over, like we're plugged in. It gives us enough to tick over, but it doesn't satiate our soul. And we are here for soul development, people. I don't know if you know that. We are here for soul development. And so when you unplug from the matrix, recognize what the matrix is, like this kid out here running. Realize your nature is nature. Strive to spend time in nature, strive to unplug. I'm on my camera right now, I didn't bring my phone with me. No, there may be a little radiation off this, but no phone, no signal. I'm out in nature doing a yomp. Bag on my back, got my glass bottle for no reason. I could have brought plastic, I got my glass bottle. I brought, I've got um, my sleeping roll mat for no reason. I ain't sleeping out here, I packed my bag up. I'm out here trying to get my body strong, spending out, us humans, are meant to be able to spend hours on our legs with a, a medium amount of weight on us. Um, and we and I'm as caught up as anyone in just trying to do these 30 minute, you know, fast workout. We want fast workouts, fast sex, fast food. And we're not built, we're built for the long haul. We're, we're, we're missing, we're not seeing the seasons of life. We're not patient enough for that. We're in Insta life. Every day needs something needs doing every day and we're not working on the, on the long end, the big picture, right? So I recognize what our ancestors have done and we would have yomped. We would have been able to spend time on our legs, carrying mediums amount of weight for a long period of time. So I need to get that skill back because that, in that skill, in that ability, in that strength comes other things. Comes the time in nature for one, comes time, more hours out rather than 
one hour workout, 30 minute workout, then I'm back, I'm on my phone, I'm on YouTube, I'm cooking more food, whatever. I need more time out here in nature to listen, to listen, to ask questions. When you ask questions, ask questions without expecting the answer. To no, to no one, or to God, or to your, to your higher self, to the trees, to the earth. Ask questions, observe and ask questions. You don't need to expect an answer, you don't need to know the answer, but ask the questions and see, let, then let it go. Shoot that thought rocket out there, let it go. But just be out asking questions, because this is, that's you. Same thing, and we're, we're, we're scared of it. We've been programmed to be scared of it through the shows we've watched, through disconnection from that and that's how we reconnect with ourselves through recognizing that and it's it's words is limited english is, li is a limited language which we may have been given to limit us you know maybe we are meant to s sing uh, as to converse or have more tones because it's because it makes it more 3d than this it's kind of dead english language that we're we're stuck with so i cannot explain to you which is almost the beautiful thing in a way because you have to go and do it for yourself. You have to go and spend time and discover it for yourself. You have the chance to rediscover what it is, what it means, what it feels like to be a human being that is more fulfilled than the one you are right now. That is more satisfied in your soul than you are right now because I don't see much soul satisfaction out there, honestly. I see people yearning for it. I see people yearning for God's love in their hearts. They don't know what it is, but that's what it is they're after, even if it's God's love. But for me, if I, whether God's real or not to you, if I, if you just could imagine the concept of God, whether it's real or not, just play with this. Is your life making, would, it, would he enjoy living through you? Make life about, would God enjoy living through me as, as my human right now? I'm trying, if I imagine God's living through me, right, I've got some work to do. I'm gonna make him proud, I'm gonna make him enjoy this. We're gonna have fun out here, on earth, in nature, with the world. We've got a crossroads, left or right, and I don't know which way it is. So I'm gonna leave you there, I'm gonna go check which way we're going. Godspeed everyone.